Today we'll be reviewing 10 different 12 volt dimmers. All of these dimmers use integrated circuits. They're not just a potentiometer inside. They vary in voltage. The ones on this table are going to be 12 to 24 volt. We'll be talking about the 12 volt characteristics. None of them are UL listed and none of them are waterproof. Uh, I have both mechanical models and touch here. Now for this test, I've cut a half meter of Leadmo 5630 Daylight White. They're rated at half amp per the half meter. Now I do have over here on the right a piece of LE2835 for one lamp. So let's get started. On the left here I have two units and they're actually the same model. I have two because when you buy them from different suppliers or sometimes the same supplier, the guts inside the unit are different. In fact, these two are different. And what that can create is uh, some different behavior. Now in these particular units, um, they do have a, the potentiometer in the front and they do have a nice wide range to them, but when you get towards the bottom, uh, they drop right off. Now this tan one drops off right away and this black one can kind of hover pretty low and you'll see the flickering there that it's trying to give you the illumination of the lower light. And uh, flicker is something we'll talk about as we go through all these. This particular units are rated at 12 volt to 24 volt, 8 amp. They come with drawdown nuts on the bottom and they have four holes uh, for mounting on the surface. Now the nice thing about these boxes is they're really nice project boxes. If you wanted to do some mods and put some other connectors in, uh, you can go ahead and do that. One of my favorite ones is to either drop a fuse in or drop in a uh, connector so that when you plug in your power supply, you don't have to put a uh, dongle off the bottom and then plug in the uh, power connector, you could actually plug it right into the side. Now one thing to keep in mind is a lot of time the connectors you put in are rated lower than the 8 amps. Uh, it's very common to find them rated about 3 to 5 amps, and uh, which is lower than the rating of the unit. Now this next box is uh, an all aluminum box. It's actually the same interior as these other two, and it has the same attributes in terms of cutoff. So you'll see that when it gets towards the bottom, it uh, does drop right off. However, it has a beautiful finish to it. Uh, it's got a nice machine knob here. Uh, it's clearly labeled on the front, has the drawdown connectors. Uh, these connectors pop out on the bottom if you need to. It is a little narrower than the others, but other than that, uh, height wise and um, you know, the length front to back, it is about the same as these other two on the side. This next unit has been quite a surprise. It's actually rated at 30 amps, which, uh, you know, 30 amps is uh, not uh, class 2 low voltage compliant, which is limited to 96 watts. But that aside, uh, the controls on this box are incredible. Uh, it's, it has a marketing attribute. It touts uh, electrodeless dimming at uh, 0 to 3 to 100%, whatever that means. But I can tell you that uh, the result of whatever that meeting is, is look at the control on this. You can barely touch the knob and you can make your LEDs just s slightly illuminate, barely see them. And this is not something I'm struggling with. This is full control all the way through the lower spectrum to the upper spectrum. And you'll notice there is no discernible flashing in there. Uh, if you needed something uh, to super dim your lights, um, what this can do is quite impressive. There's quite a bit of uh, electronics under here. Now, because it supports 30 amps, the uh, it's got a substantial lug nut system with a safety door on the top. It's got uh, clearly marked for the in and outs. Uh, it's actually wider than the others. However, it is shorter and um, it's black, so if you're trying to tuck it away, uh, it's um, got that stealth color to it. Uh, very nice unit. Now this next one is our first touch unit. And in this particular unit, to touch it, you do have to touch it in the circle. And if you touch it once, or it turns it on or turns it off. Uh, if you turn, hold the button in, it will go out to the full direction that you're going in. If you hold it the other way, it'll, it'll go back. On all of these touch units, if you touch it halfway while you're changing, you can change the direction. Now, one thing about this one and the next one I'll be showing you is these are dim down units, meaning that when you turn it off, it doesn't actually just click right off, it actually fades out. Now, that being said, uh, it can be a little uh, confusing to get used to. It's got a long way down to go from high, and you may actually uh, touch it thinking it's not turning off, touch it again, and what you're actually doing is turning it back on rather than letting it turn off all the way. So uh, that takes a little getting used to. It's, a, it's a, an attractive feature. Um, but it's a little different. Uh, the unit's actually in the same exact box as these other two over here. 
It is clearly labeled like the others, has the drawdown nuts on the side and the four mounting connections. It comes in the uh, the tan. I don't know if it comes in the black. It may. Um, whereas this uh, has that option. Now, the next unit I'm going to show you is uh, has pr very similar electronics to this one, but it's got uh, it's in this silver box. Now, the cool thing about this is you can touch it anywhere on the silver box and it will go on or off. You do not have to touch the center. Uh, that's a pro and a con. Uh, if you're going to put it someplace where you're going to bump into it, uh, expect it to turn on or turn off. Now, it has the same exact behavior. It resumes back to the previous uh, location where you were. And if you hold it in, it goes down. That's as dim as it goes. And if you hold it, it goes all the way up. And that's as bright as it goes. And you can turn it off from that location. Now, in both of these, if you hold the button when you're turning it on, you let go when it gets to the brightness you want, it stops at that brightness. So you don't have to wait for it to go all the way back. However, the only way it will go all the way back is if you uh, go ahead and touch it and let go. Uh, this particular unit, uh, it does come with a piece of adhesive that goes on the back, so you can um, uh, stick it on something, and I believe that adhesive is non-conductive, so it keeps the uh, touch part isolated to this piece of metal. Now, this unit has a very fascinating option, and you can get it with two holes on in the end, and those holes will um, contain a proximity sensor, either a PIR or an infrared, and you could put this, uh, it's advertised as a cabinet unit, but if you got it with those holes, you can make it so when the door opens, the unit uh, would turn on. Now, this unit, as I said, it does remember where you're at when the power is on, but one thing with all of these uh, units that are um, touch is that when the power goes out, they do not remember where they were and they do not turn back on. And to demonstrate that, you really have to unplug the right side. And when you plug it back in, it does not turn back on. And that's true with all the touch units I'll be showing you. So you really don't want to put these on the back end of a switch. So you, again, that confusion part when you go about touching it. Now this next one is not a touch unit. It actually has buttons on it. It's actually a tiny little circuit board. And on the back of it has uh, some chips and some wires. It's very, very thin in the center because it's just the board, and you touch the center button and that turns it on. Now, it has, uh, because there's so few buttons here, the dimming is pre-programmed, and there are seven pre-programmed dim dimming levels. They only go in one direction, so as you press it, it goes up to the top. When you get to the top, it goes to the bottom. Uh, it also has built into it different modes. So you can make your lights flash in different patterns. You can uh, control that speed by pressing the center button, which then becomes a speed button. And you can go through those modes. Now the bottom button, its sole purpose seems to be to make it resume back to a steady light. Now one cool thing about this is it does uh, keep the dim level as it went through those modes. So if you actually uh, stop at a mode and go through the flashing modes, it actually stays at that. It seems to stay at that, that dim level. Now, the other weird attribute about this one is uh, to turn it off because you have a limited quantity of buttons is you have to hold it in the center and just hold that button until the button, until it turns off. Uh, very small unit. Um, you know, you might have troubles finding it, uh, but they're very inexpensive. And um, if you need a small button, it's, it's certainly a contender. Remember to hold it and turn it off. Okay, so the next one is another touch unit. Now, the first thing about this touch unit is uh, you do have to touch it right in the center. If you don't touch it right in the center, it, it uh, doesn't conductively turn on. The second thing to note about this unit is uh, it does not remember where it was. It always turns on to 100%. Now, that means that when you hold it in, it goes to 100%. And if you keep holding it, then it goes into dim mode uh, pretty rapidly, almost right away. And that's as dim as this one goes. This is a, available in uh, black and white. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, one nice thing about it is it, it does have this nice broad flat surface on the bottom. And uh, you can go ahead and put some double-sided tape there and mount it on something. And you can see that uh, you, you do have to hold it in. You can reverse the direction. It's uh, pretty fast and moving back and forth. It's just uh, not as responsive conductively as some of the others. Uh, the next one is the only remote control unit I have on the table. I do have a, a review on how to program this remote control, and I talk about some other attributes of these controls. 
Uh, you do want to pay attention to that if you're going to have more than one of these or have a neighbor with one. Um, but you do get to turn it on. It's got uh, presets on it, so you can you can change the dimness to uh, 150 or 25 percent, and then you can go ahead and incrementally change it uh, from any one of those points up or down. Now, like the other one, this has the modes on it, so you can go through different flash modes. You can control the speed of those modes, and uh, the purpose of this green button is to resume it back to full light. Uh, this unit also um, does remember where it was. So if you go ahead and unplug it and you plug it back in, it will resume back at the level you left it at. Uh, this is a very nice feature. I use this on my garage out front, in front of my garage in the driveway. And I have it on motion sensor. Whenever the motion sensor kicks off, it uh, remembers uh, where it left off. Um, yesterday was Halloween, and that's what people got when they saw the front of the house. Uh, otherwise, it's steady because why would you want a flashing light in front of your house? Okay, the next thing is uh, this blue light over here. Uh, this is a new toy I just got. And uh, this black spot is because I have long leads in here. But this is a proximity sensor that you can put in any device you want. And uh, in this particular case, it's in a standard aluminum tray. Uh, these units are really cool. They're a board with a spring on them. And... You basically, uh, you have to solder everything on, including the spring. And the spring is the conductive part. The back of the board is blank, so you can glue it on something or put it on a surface or put it in the tray. Uh, and this is uh, what ultimately trips it. Uh, I'll be playing with this and maybe doing a totally separate review on some of the cool things. I think you can do this with this. Look at the finish on this board. It is uh, stellar. It's a uh, beautiful finish, beautifully uh, assembled. Uh, it does have this blue light, which you cannot change or turn off. So if you didn't want a blue light, um, it's going to have one. You might be able to put a piece of tape over it. But the blue light is to tell you uh, where you've put it so you know where to touch if um, you have to touch behind a piece of plastic or some specific location. So the next one I have is uh, the 10th one. And in fact, the only review I can give you is that um, I, I assembled it. And uh, the only documentation on assembling it is a picture they have online. Uh, it's a very small unit. I wanted to see how small of a unit I could get. The touchpad is on the back. And I soldered it all together, as the illustration showed. And I plugged it in. The uh, light did not turn on, uh, but the chip started smoking uh, right away, and I unplugged it. So this one burned out. Um, it's about $1.79. Uh, in quantity, you can get that price down. Uh, I was hoping it would work out because I think it's pretty cool to have something that small that you could have a touch plate on. Very, very low amperage rating. Um, you do have to be uh, cautious of that. And uh, again, it may not work. So if about 20 of them would have 10 didn't work. So uh, that's what it was. And maybe I'll see if I can burn it up the rest of the way later. So as you look at these, you know, there's some things you need to consider. Uh, first off, uh, you know, look at the leads. You know, it's great to have these barrel connectors on them. The barrel connectors are very useful for some people. Uh, if if this is advertised as for cabinets, and you can see some pictures where people have installed them online, uh, you're trying to be uh, stealthy and uh, install this in a tight proximity. You're trying to attach it to something. They give you that double-sided uh, tape to put on the back of it. But the reality is, uh, then you have to go about hiding all these connectors, and you go have to go ahead and put barrel connectors on the end of your wire and figure out how to suspend and hide all that. So uh, having just a barrel connector option uh, can be somewhat restrictive. In the remote control uh, modules, you can get these with just whips on them. Uh, these other ones are generally have barrel connectors. Now, that being said, some of you might be saying, just cut it off. Uh, yes, you can. So... Um, you could cut the barrel connectors off and uh, put some uh, terminal block in or something else that's more practical to you. But it's something to consider when you buy them, and you're, and you're paying for that. It usually costs a little more to, to uh, put all these terminations on for you. So if you're looking at putting it behind a motion sensor or switch, um, you probably may not want the touch if you want to be able to flip the switch on and have it turn on. That's where these mechanical ones kick in or these circuit board ones that have a memory to them. Uh, when you turn it on, it's always going to resume back to where you left it off. So that's something to consider as well. Now, this obviously is just a small sampling of what's out there on the market today. 
there are lots of other ones out there. There are new ones coming out all the time. Maybe in the future I'll review some more two color ones. I do have some color ones that I'll be uh, reviewing soon. I have a couple of different ones. Uh, this one's a uh, color one that has the remote control with it because I wanted the ability to use a remote control when you didn't have a phone around. So word about flashing. Incandescent lights, as the voltage goes down, they dim. In LED lights, as the voltage goes down, they shut off. And below that point, they don't illuminate any light. So to compensate for that, they've come up with this process of oscillating the light, uh, basically flashing it back and forth as fast as you can. And because the cell starts lighting at one little portion and then goes on to uh, fill the whole cell, it gives the illusion to the eye that the light is dim because it's only a portion of the cell that's lit during that, that momentary flash. So you may find in certain environments that the flashing becomes visible if you have something in the vicinity that is oscillating at a different rate, like a camera or possibly another type of lighting. I hope you found this information useful. The video library is growing. Please feel free to browse through my channel and you'll see videos like the ones here.